So today's topic in this mini lecture is the topic called literal equations. Um, sometimes in a different text they may call it transforming formulas, but we'll go with literal equations. So what is that? A literal equation is basically a mathematical formula and it contains more than one variable this time, right? We're used to having equations with one variable like x and solve for x and solve for y, but this time a literal equation will have more than one variable where each variable is equally as important. However, you're still told to solve for one of those variables. And don't let it trick you because it has a bunch of variables in it. You still use your same techniques of equality. What you do to one side, you do to the other side, right, to solve these equations. So let's start out with the first one. Let's say we have b is equal to a x and you're told to solve for the variable that's shown so we'll say x right there so b is equal to a x we're told to solve for x so between a and x you ask yourself what operation is going on addition subtraction multiplication or division i would say multiplication therefore you do the opposite which is division what you do to one side, you do to the other, and you always divide by whatever's next to the variable you're solving for. Well, we're solving for x, so we divide both sides by a. And then when you think about it, they both cancel out, so you're left with the x, right? And that's what you want, the x to be by itself. So x is equal to b over a. And then there's nothing else you can do with it because you can't really divide b by a as variables, so you leave them as such. All right, uh, next problem. Let's try one we have C is equal to AX minus B, right? And I'll put um, a semicolon there and then the variable that we're told to solve for. So we're gonna solve for X where we have C equals AX minus B. So if we're gonna solve for X, we can't just get the X by itself right away. Why? Because there's an A attached to it. So first, we need to get rid of what's next to the AX term. That's first. So we do the opposite of that subtraction, which is addition. We add B. We add B. So on the left-hand side, you're not... I won't say you're adding the B to the C. You're just adding it to that place next to it. So it becomes C plus B is equal to AX. And now you can get the x by itself, right? Once that x term is isolated. So now we say, okay, between a and x is multiplication. So we do the opposite, which is division. You divide by whatever's next to the variable you're solving for, which is a, you're dividing by a. So the a's will cancel and you're left with x is equal to c plus b over a. All right. so now we move to a little bit more challenging problem let's see maybe we can do a problem such as this we're told to solve s is equal to n over 2 times the quantity of a plus 1 and then we're told to solve for a solve for that so every time i write a semicolon then the variable that's what we're solving for Right? So I'll write it over. So it's always a good idea to write your original problem over again. Just so you're not writing on top of the original problem. So you know what to study from. Right? So here we're solving for A. Well, A is inside the parentheses. So the first thing we may need to do is eventually get the A plus 1 by itself. And now I need to get rid of this fraction. So I see a denominator. So I'm going to multiply both sides by the denominator of 2. And if you wanted to, you can make the 2, 2 over 1, if that helps you out. Either way is fine. So I'm going to take the denominator and multiply both sides by the denominator. But you never multiply by what's in the parentheses. So 2 times s is 2s. When you multiply 2 times n over 2, 2 over 1 times n over 2, the 2's will cancel out when you're left with n. 
times a plus 1. All right, so now the next thing we can do is say, okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and distribute through. So 2s is equal to n times a is na, n times a is na, n times 1 is n. So now I'm still saying to myself, okay, I'm solving for a, right? The problem said to solve for a. So that means I need to get this positive n out of there. So I do the opposite of adding n. I subtract n, subtract n. So I have 2s minus n equals na. Now I'm almost there. Now between n and a is multiplication. So I do the opposite, which is division. And remember, I'm solving for a, so I'm going to divide by what's next to the a, which is the n. So then the n's will cancel out, and I have a is equal to 2s minus n over n. Okay. So moving to another problem. Let's see. Let's try this next one where we have m is equal to x plus y plus z divided by 3 and we're told to solve for the y that y that's in the middle there so first things first I'm gonna rewrite my problem because I don't like to write on top of the original problem and then I say to myself I'm gonna take the denominator and multiply the denominator times both sides so 3 times the M and 3 times that entire X plus Y plus Z over 3 now you can write it as 3 over 1 if you choose also. So 3 times m is 3m. And then here when you multiply 3 times this fraction, x plus y plus z over 3, the 3's cancel out and you're left with x plus y plus z. And remember, what are you solving for? We're solving for the y. Well, we have to get rid of the x and the z if we're solving for the y. These aren't quite connected. When I say connected, I mean like through multiplication. So we just do the opposites. We do subtract a z, and the opposite of this positive x is subtracting x. So subtract x and subtract z. Um, really not subtracting it from the 3m. I'm just moving them to that other side. So 3m minus x minus z equals, and what are we left with? We're left with y, which, we're, which is what we were uh, solving for. And then we'll do another one. Uh, we'll say v to the second power, v squared, equals u to the second power, or u squared, plus 2as. And we're told to solve for s. All right, so to solve for s, to get that s by itself, we need to get rid of the u squared first, u to the second power, because first you have to get the 2as by itself. So we could do the opposite of positive u to the second, subtract u to the second. All right, so we have v to the second minus u to the second equals, when you subtract them, that makes zero, they zero out, equals 2as. All right, we're solving for s between 2a and s is multiplication, so we do the opposite, which is division. What you do the one side, you do to the other, and we're solving for s, so we're going to divide by what's next to it, the 2a. And you see the 2's cancel, the a's cancel, and you're left with the s. That's what we wanted. And s is just equal to v squared minus u squared over 2a. Right, and then we can move forward and try one more. Let's go ahead and try one like this, where we have s is equal to a minus r l over 1 minus r. So we're told to solve for l. All right, so I'm going to rewrite the problem 
a minus r l x is equal to a minus r l over one minus r. So I'm told to solve for l, right? Told I need to solve for l. So I'm just going to take my entire denominator of one minus r. And I'm going to say one minus r times both sides, one minus r times this other side as well. So when I multiply one minus r times s, um, actually I'll write it out. 1 minus r times s. 1 minus r times s. And you may be thinking, oh, there's something I can do there. But first, let's cancel those, and you have a minus r l. Well, 1 minus r times s, whenever you see something right outside the parentheses, and it doesn't matter if the s was on the left side of the parentheses or like it is on this right side, you can distribute as long as there's no, no plus or minus sign in between the parentheses and the s. So that means distribute. So s times 1 is s. 1 times s is s. Negative r times s is negative r s. And that's equal to a minus r l. And sometimes in these things they get um, kind of drawn out with steps, so you just got to go back and remind yourself, hey, what am I solving for? I'm solving for the l. I'm solving for the L. So that means I need to get rid of this A first to get RL by itself. So I have S minus RS minus A equals negative RL. And now I divide both sides by negative R. Negative R. So then I'm left with what? L is equal to S minus RS minus A over negative 